came back to Late Night 4. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the legend, Tyler Perry. <laughs> show 20 years ago but nobody knew me then so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna move this because i'm a big guy this is for this oh yeah for little people so that's, they can sit here. yes that yeah. we call that the emmanuel lewis pillow yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how you doing man i am doing great i'm so happy to be here and i'm happy to have you here and i'm happy to see the film business in the condition that it's in along with your christmas movie there are two other Black Christmas movies. I yeah, yeah, Black Nativity and Best Man Holiday. Yeah, yes. Best Man Holiday did really, really well. So, really well. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really a good thing. It's really, it's really a good thing. It's, it's changing. Wow. Let's go way. Where we going? <laughs> Where the hell we going, Cindy? Where we going, Cindy? <laughs> Can I speak to her for a moment? Yeah, go, Cineo. Okay. There is a rumor. Ain't no damn water out here, Cineo. Uh -oh. Somebody bring some damn water. Somebody toss me a water. Yeah, yes. toss me a water. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead now. Go ahead, Cineo. M Dog is in the house. Yeah, yeah. my dear, here. My dear, here. Oh, there is a rumor. Yeah. That you had an affair with Bill Clinton, man. Ain't that right? That's what they say in the barbershop. Y'all yeah, ain't gonna be talking about my swirl. <laughs> I swear, I invented the twirl. <laughs> if you can't go to work, go to twerk. <laughs> you, how long are you going to keep this up, man? Yeah, come we, on, we, come we, on, come on, come on. Let's stop. It don't, it don't work without the costume. Yes, yes, it don't work without the breast. Yes, you need, you uh, need the breast. But the character itself, I heard Eddie Murphy talking about the clumps and the fact that he looked a lot at Moms Mabley yeah. when he was a kid, and that's where he got that from. Were you influenced by Moms also? I was influenced by Eddie, man. When I saw Eddie do the clumps, I think this guy is brilliant. How do you do all these characters? I said, I'm going to try my hand at a female character. And I thought, who's the funniest person I know? And that's my mother and my aunt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, I had no idea that this was going to last as long as it did. But, I, but I'm like, okay. I tried to, I did one play and had Medea and everybody was like, yeah, yeah, we really like it. Then I did another play. This is long before the movies. Did mm -hmm. another play, didn't put her in it. Audience was going crazy. Like, where's Medea? Right. I said, y'all want me to put that on again? I'm a pretty big, ugly woman. Yeah. Y'all want to get again? So, so I did it again, and, and then did the movies, and, and it almost happened by accident, man. In, in what sense? I, I was going to do the Medea character, small, really quick, on stage, five minutes, make people laugh and get off the stage. But there was a, a r and singer who will remain, remain nameless, yeah. who was in the show. I was promoting for her to be there, and uh, sold all these tickets out in Chicago for her to be there, and she never showed up. Ooh, yeah, so all these people come in looking for her, and she wasn't there. And nobody really knew my name then. But I, I, the Medea character got longer and longer and longer in the show, so I was doing my lines and hers. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started. Right. So it, it was a happy accident. And putting pen to paper started because you were watching Oprah one day, right? Yeah, yeah. And she used the word cathartic. Which I didn't know what the hell that meant. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, to tell them what you heard. I, I, she, Oprah was uh, talking about... <laughs> this is so funny. Big black man talking about Oprah. Yes, I was watching <laughs> Oprah. And she was talking about... Um, uh, writing things down that you had been through that you experienced to help you get over them and get past them so i started writing and i was using different characters names because if somebody found it i didn't want them to know that i was talking about myself at that time i wasn't willing to talk about it but um a friend of mine found it so man this is a really good play and that's how it started for me that's how i started writing that's how i know when you when it's your destiny when this is you you're gonna you will live your entire life trying to figure out what's for me what am i supposed to be doing and I, the, the, the thing for me is, Arsenio, is this. I had this entire amazing vision of what my life was going to be. But the most frustrating part was is I had no path to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it's so disturbing to have, I mean, I'm a man of faith, to have God show you all of this and show you all the things that you can achieve and obtain and, and no road map. So when things started to fall into place and I was able to get to this place, I was blown away. So I tell people, don't worry about the road map to get there. Just work very, very hard. And the people and places and things will line up for you to be where you're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, yeah. It's extra cool that 
you see Oprah and she inspires you and then flash forward to now and you're writing for her. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. Two new shows on the network, uh, uh, Love Thy Neighbor and The Have and Have Nots. And the, the Have and Have Nots, yeah. That, yeah, that huge ratings for the network, so we're really, really excited about it. And I met her long before uh, I was, anybody ever knew my name? Yeah. I was, I was working at a hotel. I, I think I, yeah, t tell them the story. I, I was working at a hotel. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was working at a hotel, and they, they, Oprah was coming for a convention. So it's like, okay, she's coming here to the hotel, and I'm working as housekeeper. Now, my job is to put the towels in the back. Mm -hmm. This day, I volunteered to vacuum the hallway. That, 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 I, I can hardly listen to the story, because can you imagine coming down the hallway and seeing Tyler Perry with towels? It's just amazing. It's that he's so a true. legend now, so but at one time he had towels. You know, um, anyway, I'm so, sorry, God, God is good. Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm vacuuming the floor. She gets off the elevator, and I say, okay, I'm going to say something to her. I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm just going to ask for an autograph. I'm going to ask for an autograph. She walks past me. I didn't say anything. I said, <laughs> so next day she was leaving. I found out what time she was checking out. I said, ma'am, this is the bellman. We'd like to know what time you're checking out of your room. She said, we'll let you know. I was like, okay, thank you. I just talked to Oprah on the phone, right? <laughs> so I'm vacuuming. I'm back in the floor. I'm back in the floor. She comes out of the room I'm trying to get up the nerve to ask her because I know I'm not supposed to. She walks past me. She goes to the elevator. And it's about from here to way back over there where the band is. Mm -hmm. And I said, can I have your autograph? Yeah. <laughs> She turns around, she looked at me, why do you say that when I was over there where oh, you walked? that's funny. I said, okay, never mind. <laughs> no, but she gave me an autograph. She gave me an autograph. What, what a great experience, a great way to, to meet her. Um, your Am I is, talking too much? No, you're not. Okay. It's a talk show and we want to hear yes, you but talk. but it's your talk show. No, they don't want to hear the you talk. This Arsenio Hall no, no, no. show. They want to hear Tyler Perry speak on the Arsenio yeah. Hall show. I know my audience. Um, Let's talk to them about what... Oh, you want to take a commercial? Okay, we'll take a commercial. Oh, Come right yeah. back. Oh, yeah, we got to go with my back to the college. There's some hope you spent. Jenny Craig, like, get the hell out of here. Child is there. Hey, that y'all don't bring the child to the no more. Y'all don't mention the North Pole, so that I've been on the pole. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My audience is laughing at a little sizzle reel. I don't even recognize myself when I do that, man. Really? I don't even recognize. I swear to you, I'm sitting there sometimes I'm looking at it. I'm laughing myself going, that's, oh wait, that's me. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. how do you direct you in those moments. It's pretty interesting because uh, <laughs> I'm standing there in the full costume trying to direct actors. All right, I need the lights over here. I need this over here. And I'm uh, talking in this voice. Yeah, yeah. So with, the, yeah, with all of this going on, and they're looking at me like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so it works out. It works out. Uh, you do so many things. Of all those things, directing, writing, acting. Uh, what do you like doing most? If you had to just have one. If I if I had to choose one, it'd be the writing. Because yeah. I can create these worlds and I can just disappear and, and I wouldn't have to be in front of the camera. It would be fantastic. And, and, and what do you attribute? I, I mean, even the sizzle reel we just watched, they were laughing. Um, how do you reach the audience? What's the answer to your success? Because it's amazing. I've seen you go from shrink wrapping your own product and doing <laughs> plays on Sundays in cities around America to what you are now. How do you do it? What's the secret for kids out there? Listen, for me, I, I, can, I can tell you, the greatest gift my mother gave me was she taught me about the Lord. You know, she gave me Jesus is what I say. She gave me Jesus. She taught me about faith and, 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 and because my mother endured some crazy things, but I always saw her go to church and I always saw her smile. So whatever I'm going through, I know that I always have that. You know, when things are great, I have it. When they're not so great, I have it. So I attribute a lot of it to going back to what my roots are and my faith. But but also hard work, man. You cannot have it without hard work. A lot of these kids today, they don't want to work hard. I was on the road from 1998 until 2004 doing 300 and something performances a year all over the country, end to end. And before social media, I'm, at, I'm out on the end of, at the end of the show saying, you know, sign up for my mailing list. Here's my website. People are like, you're what? You're www what? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, was, I was helping the audience get to know what, where my website was. And, and I had a few million people on following me on my website. So I could send out an email and sell out 
the theaters and arenas all over the country before we even advertise anything. So that's where it all started. And it's been the people. Let me just say this, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, let me say this about this chitlin circuit. Yes. A lot of times we as African American people are, so we've evolved so much that we look down our nose at, at certain things. But what I found about this circuit, it was so wonderful. You had Josephine Baker and Billie Holiday and, and all of these people, Ella Fitzgerald, who could not perform in white establishments. So they went on the road and all these, these little small juke joints with chicken fries and chitlins and they traveled the country and they became so famous among their own people that they were able to support themselves and live well. Well, cut to 1998. I'm doing the exact same thing some 50, 60 years later, traveling around to African-American people. They had made me so famous within my own culture that I couldn't walk down the street without being recognized. Get to Hollywood, nobody knows my name. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, but what I say to people is do not despise your beginning. Do not despise where you come from because that is God will plant you somewhere where you can grow so strong and so tall that... As long as you don't turn your back on who you are and where you come from, you hold very closely to that, it'll take you all the way you, to where you want to go. Yeah. yeah. So where are we going to go? You know, um, you and I have a lot of things in common. Uh, you are a millionaire. I have $200,000 in the bank. Um, <laughs> you have two hundred. dollars loan me some money. <laughs> uh, we've both grown up on, like, Flip Wilson and Milton Berle and people... And as a result of that, gotten big laughs on the big screen in a big dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but we've been criticized. Yeah. And not just you and I, but for some reason when a black actor does something like that, he gets criticized yeah. in a way that I don't think um, Mr. Mom stars. Yeah. Or, or, or actors of that nature go have to go through. I mean, I've heard... Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I don't even want to go into the names, Miss Spike Lee. Uh, we've had so many <laughs> yeah. critics who tip over the apple cart and try to uh, dog what we do in those moments. Let me just tell you something, man. This is, this is an argument that I, I don't even get into mm -hmm. because I'm going to focus on the millions, tens of millions of people around the world who love what I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to get into the argument about it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because it's so foolish, we, a lot of times in life, we start focusing on the negative rather than paying attention to all the positive things that are going on. And I look at, I look at my life and I look at uh, our history. You know, this happened with, with Langston Hughes and uh, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington. Langston Hughes said that Zora Neale Hurston was a new version of the darkie. You know, he said that about her. This woman who wrote Their Eyes Were Watching God. So if you look at the history of us as black people, this has been going on forever. I'm not going to participate in it. I'm going to just rise above it. That's all I, that's, that's what I do. That's what I do. Um, you know, I've heard you say, and I've read many times, that you didn't even think you would live to this age. You had a friend who died of AIDS, another friend that was shot, and there was death all around you, and you yeah. didn't think you'd be here. Uh, would you talk on your childhood a little bit? Yeah, I just, it, the, death was, was everywhere, you know, growing up in New Orleans. I, I'd go to church and, and see ch there was an AIDS epidemic going, and we as black people, we absolutely knew, were the absolute last to know what was going on. So I'd go to church and I'd find out somebody else died or somebody else died. Then I had a very, very close friend, one of my only friends in, in high school. Um, he was selling crack cocaine. And I was at home watching the news, and I saw his face. He had been murdered. I just left him, you know. So having all of those moments, I, I think, what is this for me? What is, even though, you know, I had faith, I'm still going, what is my life going to be? What, I'm still here. I'm in the same place. What is it going to be the difference in me making it and them? And I tell you, had it not been for the grace of God, I would be one of those people. I would absolutely be one of those people. But Tyler, uh, all respect, all respect to your spirituality, there are some Christians from your neighborhood who are gone. What else is it? Yeah, because you're still here. You're yeah, a survivor. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It, 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 I, you can say that. I can say absolutely the grace of God because Arsenio, the, just there's some things that man, that don't make sense. You know, when when the bullet was over there, I was over here. I mean, nobody can. You can't. You can't explain some of those things. You know. And yes, there there were Christians there who 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 did not make it. But I, I had a mother. That was a strong woman, man. And every time I do this character, in fact, every time I'm in Medea, I'm paying homage to her because she was just, you know, she loved me. She would tell me right from wrong. 
she would sit me down and, and, and she would knock the hell out of me. You needed it. When I need, yeah. And then she would pray for me at the same time. I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to whoop your ass right now. You know, those kind of moments, with those kind of parents are so important because children have so much life, they have so much inside of them. And if people don't give them the, just a little bit of nudge. I had a teacher tell me, I feel like I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, I, okay, no. okay. <laughs> I, I had a school teacher tell me. We're, we're loving it. Oh, you're educating and entertaining. We, we, we love hearing I appreciate you speak. Do you have a little bit I had a school teacher that told me that I told him I wanted to be a millionaire. He said it never happened. He said it will never happen. You're poor. You're black. This is where you come from. The system is set up her? against you. It will never happen. Oh, okay. Now go sit down she was a and we'll figure out what you're going to do. Wow. See, um, you you have so much knowledge inside you. You need a blank canvas in your life to teach, my brother. I, I know you want kids. I heard you talk about yeah, it. Yeah. That, you still uh, I have plans? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, haven't gone to see a house to yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't got to worry about prenups because I'm not, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you would like to have children, but maybe not get married. We don't work for her, but <laughs> when I call and talk to her. Here, here, here is the thing. This is, this is what I know. I know that I wouldn't be a she, good husband. Uh, tell me I know that. I, I love to oh. work. Oh. I don't want to. I don't want to call. I don't want to check in. I don't want to. Oh. I don't. I hate having. I know this is bad. <laughs> and I was, you know, we we just had a great. Thanksgiving together and, and it was wonderful but I was like can you wait, how long are you gonna be here you know yeah, I'm just yeah, like yeah, I yeah. just I, I, I want to be in the bed by myself I want to throw the cover and we have we argue over hot and cold and she's always always cold yeah and I'm always hot yes I want the air on about 68 when I'm sleeping she wants it on somewhere between 85 and hell I just can't figure it out. I can't I, we, I can't figure it out, but but a father, I'd be a fantastic father. Yes, you would. I'd be an amazing father, and I don't want to. I don't want to have all of this. I don't want to work this hard, amass all of this, and then not be able to leave it to my children. That would be tragic to me. Yeah, don't leave it to cats or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, that. won't be that. No. Won't be that. Okay, I'll be right. charity of my kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Yes. <laughs> But we got all of this. Plus, right now, Empire guarantees flooring installation by Christmas or it's free. 800 500 empire Today. Hey, you're driving trucks now. How's that going? I love it. Thanks to CDS, I'm making great money and I'm home every night. Haven't missed a pork again yet. And it only took 20 days to get your CDL? I need to call CDS. The road to success starts at CDS. <laughs> Yes. We're here taking selfies. Taking selfies during the break. How has social media? We talked a little bit about www. How has social media affected your life? I just uh, crossed 10 million on, on, on Facebook, man. Yeah. 10 million, yeah, yeah. How's next? What's next professionally for you? You know, I, I um, hmm. I'm going to expand the studio. Right now I've got... Uh, That's in Atlanta? In Atlanta, yeah. I've got five sound stages down there. I'm going to about 18 now. Because, yeah, lots of lots of people work in there from all walks of life, man. It's really exciting for me. So to get an to have an opportunity... Because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm talking too much. Okay. No, no. All right, I hear you. Okay. Just when, when you've been given... This but let me say, just stop talking. I'm going to say hi. Okay. Well, that ain't no damn talk yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I watched 12 Years a Slave, which is based on a true story. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's very, very powerful. As I was, as I was watching the movie, it just, it just reaffirmed that, you know, I've been given this great gift, you know, to own a studio and to be able to hire all these people. And it's because of the people that have invested in me. So I have this tremendous sense of responsibility to pass it on, to help it grow and, and make sure that it continues. So I'm feeling really good about that. So, so as far as the question about my future, what does the future hold for me? It's just doing more of what has been given to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. great, man. And we're going to go out this holiday and uh, check out Medea in the theaters for...
Chris, yeah, say that theaters again. <laughs> theaters? The theaters, because you know we like to pick it up at the barbershop after it opens. So we're going to go on to the... Don't act like you ain't bought no bootlegs up in there. <laughs> you know what? We started with Medea. Let's finish with her. You know, I have, I have an auntie like her, my Aunt Maybell. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, I, I think I'd like Aunt Maybell to ask her some questions. If okay, you well, go on and ask the question then. <laughs> <laughs> ask some questions. You know, you, baby, I know that you probably have a, a young boyfriend in your life. Or t t tell there ain't nobody been there. You can't be telling folk that on TV. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. So, Justin Bieber. <laughs> but go on, tell your story. <laughs> hey, wait. Now, do, do you like this music? And Justin Bieber? Yeah. Yeah, I like all of his music. I like all of that stuff he sang, the blue line. I like the blow line. <laughs> yeah, that Justin Bieber sang the blow line. Yeah, I, I don't listen to these young folks. I, I, I seen you the other night had on the man who had the black panties come free. Went to see, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aura. Aura Kelly. Aura Kelly, yeah. I heard Aura Kelly. Now, do you like Aura Kelly? Yeah, I like it, but you know, ain't nothing wrong with a little bump around. Something wrong with a little bump around. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, you ain't finna give me no little bumping ground. I want a lot of bumping ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all, 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 all these children, they are doing the Instagram. Instagram? You know, uh -huh. When you and I came up, uh, Instagram was like a cocaine delivery service. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't remember, I don't remember no Instagram. Yeah. But, uh, what, what do you think of uh, Twitter and Instagram and is, is, is my face still on? Is it my face in space? What I don't know what it is. It's one of them one of them faces on in the Facebook and face all the Yeah, one. they got all the Facebooks and the face looks and the Instagrams and all that stuff. I t I tell you, I pay attention to them. I pay attention to them because you know you got to keep up with the young folks. Mm -hmm. So I pay attention to them. Okay, I got a book face too. Oh, you got you, Yeah, I got you one. You I got it? a book face. I got a book face out there. Everybody come check me out on my book face. Yeah, and 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 uh, Tyler on Twitter. He's Tyler at Tyler Perry. Yeah, he on Twitter. He on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. but I'm a. Uh, I, I guess that's what they call it. Yeah, he on Twitter, but I'm on. Uh, ah. That's the sexy version of Twitter. Uh, you know, what? you don't take selfies. You take sexes. <laughs> Speaking of sex, I just need you to share something with me yes. and the women watching. Mm -hmm. You always look right in here, so good, so full. What kind of brassiers do you wear? Yeah. I don't like sharing all my secrets, but the truth is, I don't wear one. <laughs> the way to have your breasts look as perfect as God intended them, they just need to be free. <laughs> and if you're going to have all that rejuvenation surgery, put some memory foam up there, everything will be all right. <laughs> Swing it on. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler Perry. Check out the new film, Tyler Perry, on the day of Christmas in theaters nationwide tonight. Tonight.
Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Thank you, Nadine. Black Shot Network. 